Hi, my name is Daniel McKinley and I am at Zia Comics in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And today, I am going to show you the two to four player game Kanagawa by Bruno Catala and from Yellow Games. Hey, listen! So in Kanagawa, players are going to be playing by drafting multi-use cards. These cards always have two different spots on it. They have the skill and they have the painting. The goal of the game is to have the most victory points by painting your painting and getting bonus points from these diploma tiles. Now there's a lot of terms for what you're going to be doing, but I'm going to be using pretty general terms just to explain it as quickly as I can. So in the game, the round starts with the first row being filled. Let's say this was a four player game. We would fill it all the way up until the fourth player. Now you notice this spot is red. That means that this card will be laid face down. It is completely normal that all of these cards have different backs on them. These do, these do tell you some of the information that's on it. For example, this next card will have at least one, two, or three trees. Where this one will have buildings, this will have people, and the blue cards will have animals. So you can have a little bit of information, you just won't know which ones are in there. As the tiles are laid up like this, players will draft them. They can choose to either stay and continue studying, or they can pick up a row. For example, if I was this player and I wanted this building, I might just pick it up immediately and paint it into my skills or as part of my painting, like so. I'm going to use this as a skill. You'll notice because of the starting tile, each player starts with two of these and can have one movement point. You can place your paintbrushes on any time during this and you can move one once per round. So for example, I might put this here on the black paint for a future turn. Then any players who have passed, you fill in the rows the same way below it, putting the ones on the red spaces face down. And then the next player may choose if they want to continue waiting or if they want to pick up a tile. If they want to pick up, let's say, this tile, they would simply take these up and everything else that's in that row. So these two I'd be able to paint. Now, it wouldn't be added to the same players, but I'm showing this as an example. I might add this is the skill, and I might add this one as the painting itself. There is a minimum cost for it, meaning this one needs black paint. Well, thankfully, I'm using black paint, so I can add it to my start tile like so, and I can continue building my panoramic picture. This game will continue giving you abilities for your skills and for building the paintings. Now, these tiles up here, the diploma tiles, they will give you bonus points. For example, if I were to have certain combinations of buildings, like this painted, and these ones, then I can potentially get points based on the animals, people, buildings that are on here. This one, if you have two or three, four or five trees, you can score one of these tiles. If you have two or three or four buildings that are not the same, you can score these. Two, three people that are not the same or three that are the same. Or finally, any of the combination of animals that are depicted on these, you can score those. These have to do with your skills portion of it. So if I ever have three paintbrushes or four, if I ever can paint combinations of two, three, or four sets of the four different colors, or if I have extra movement tiles, two or three. Now the tricky thing with this game is that as soon as you get one of the combinations, you must choose to either take it right then and there or wait to potentially get something more valuable. For example, if I ever got a second one, a second movement, I can choose to take this one point tile and the first player marker, but I have to decide exactly then. If I wait, I am no longer allowed to take this tile, even if somebody takes the three point before me. Also, you're only allowed to take a single tile from each of the colors. So if I have four trees right here and I take this four point tile and I later get another tree, I cannot take this because I've already taken one from this set. It adds a cool little push your luck element to the game. The game's going to continue 
adding points to it. At the end of the game, you're going to be counting up the number of tiles that are in your panorama picture that's worth one point each. You get bonus points for any symbols that show points here, minus some if you use the skills for it. Then you're going to choose the, the panoramic section that has the longest amount of the same season, for example this. this these have two fall. This one does not because it is not connected. So I'd score a bonus two points for my longest segment. And then finally you get two points for the start player marker. The player with the most points at the end of the game wins. And that's how you play Kanagawa. As you can see, if you love the art style from this and you want a deep strategic game, you have one right here. Not only has Yellow done an amazing job with the components, but they have done an amazing job with the art and all around this is a fantastic fun game to play. So if you'd like to come give it a try, come by Zia Comics in Las Cruces, New Mexico where you can try Bruno, Bruno Catala's and Charles Chevalier's Kanagawa. Get nerdy with me. Tell me what game that you get on Is it card or e? What kind of class do you play girl In an RPG